So what you're saying is we're on our own, Dunstan said morosely. Sounds like it, Gerald said. He as good as said that we were free to rip each other to shreds, as long as we weren't too overt about it. Well, crap, Dunstan said, his can running dry as he drank from the bendy straw. The five of them were sitting in the media room, talking about what they would do tonight. Rebecca was reading Eclipse, Masha was lost in thought, and Dex was pretending to watch TV, but Dunstan and Gerald weren't fooled. Something was on his mind, but whatever it was, he wasn't sharing. He'd been quiet through dinner, too, he and Masha both, but if Dex was lost in thought, then Masha looked like she was working on something. She looked like one of those kids who's glued to their tablet when they're working on something they're passionate about, a house in Minecraft, or maybe some kind of puzzle. We kind of figured it would be a lost cause, didn't we? Gerald asked, and Dunstan nodded as he hooked the empty can into the garbage can. It hit the rim, bounced off the wall, and fell in with an angry rattle. Dunstan pumped his arm in the air before turning back to Gerald. So, what can we do about it? said Dunstan. Well, we can get some evidence. And do what? Dex said, seeming to come out of his thoughts long enough to shoot down theirs. They already said they wouldn't help, and I doubt she's dumb enough to write it in her journal. Yeah, but if I could get her hairbrush or something, Dunstan said, but Dex shook his head. It's still your word against hers, and they don't care. Then we hit her first, Dunstan said. We make her stop. We threaten her or beat her up. She, she's just a girl. We can... A, Rebecca said over the top of her book, that's pretty sexist. B, she's just a girl who can implant ideas into people's heads. What's to stop her from convincing all three of you that you're chickens or cows or something? It's going to be hard to defend your friend if you're all farm animals. Dunstan growled in his throat. Okay then, smarty pants, what would you do? Rebecca shrugged. Probably drug her. She can't do anything if she's asleep, can she? We could get our hands on some sleep medication and... Don't bother, Masha said, making the boys on either side of her jump as she came out of her very serious silence. I can handle this. They all looked at her, not quite believing. Then, why has it gone on so long? Rebecca asked. If you could stop it, then why have you been letting her attack you? Masha fixed her old young eyes on Rebecca, and the girl shuddered under that unwanted scrutiny. Because I wasn't aware that it was happening, if I had known, I would have blocked her out. Now that I know, I can stop it. Rebecca looked unsure, but couldn't much argue with the girl's look of determination. So, is there anything we can do to help? Dex asked. I don't think so, Masha said. Just keep an eye peeled tonight in case of trouble. I don't know what will happen if I fight back, but I might not be the one screaming tonight when she comes to mess with me. Masha went back to staring into the middle distance, but... Her friends made a point to look away. The little girl had an intensity that was not altogether healthy. Chandra was washing her face in the sink when her ex-best friends came in. She smirked at them in the mirror, figuring this had something to do with the little brain trust she had seen gathered up at dinner. Maybe the little bitch had told them that she was using her gifts to hurt her. Maybe she had asked them to tell her to stop. Chandra didn't carry the way. She wasn't going to ease off until the little bitch was as crazy as a porta potty rat. You two got something on your mind? She asked, looking up questioningly. Say it if you do, but make it quick. I want to catch tonight's episode of Riverdale, and I don't want to fight for a good spot. Brittany opened her mouth, but seemed to think better of it. Jenny beat her to it. There's a rumor that you're messing with Masha. That's why she's screaming every night. Chandra turned around and leaned against the sink. So what if I am? Chandra, that's downright evil, Brittany said, looking shocked. Not only is it hurting her, but it's hurting everyone else, too. Yeah, that's kind of the point, Chandra said, looking at the two of them furiously. If the whole dorm is tired of being kept awake, 
Maybe they should do something about it. Like hurt Masha? Jenny asked, putting her hands on her hips. Chandra blew a strand of hair out of her eyes. Were these two really here to try to guilt her into laying off? If that's what it takes, she's such a little thing. I don't figure it would take much. Maybe that big dumb brute who protects her will do it one night when he's tired of being kept awake. Maybe the blonde guy in the red band class. Maybe it'll even be one of you two. Doesn't matter to me. I'll sleep like a baby. My hands are clean. Both of them looked alarmed and that made her laugh. Come on, ladies. Don't tell me neither of you have used your powers for something you want. Jenny, didn't you tell me you made that boy stop picking on you by convincing him that he loved you? Britt, wasn't there that girl who you... Stop it, Brittany said. We told you those things in confidence while we were swapping secrets. I don't even know why this surprises us. You told us about a couple of people you had messed with with your little ability. Why should it be any different here? Chandra only shrugged. Exactly my point. Don't act like I'm the bad guy here. We all have a little blood on our hands, don't we? When I break that little bitch, it would be a good idea to come back and say you're sorry. Be an even better idea to fall on your knees and beg my forgiveness. Because once she's out of the way, maybe I'll decide that you guys are the problem. We'll stop you, Jenny said. We know what you're doing. We'll fight back. Chandra's laugh bounced off the bathroom walls like a Super Bowl. That little girl has more ability in her little finger than you two have put together. If she can't stop me, then what hope do either of you have? You can't keep me out. I'll break either of you in record time. You can bow beside the throne or set yourself against it. That's your choice. She pushed through them, parting them easily as she went on her way. Her smile wasn't as certain as it could have been, though. The little bitch had stopped her earlier today, and she didn't know how. Her thoughts had butted up against something strong, stronger than the usual passive resistance, at least. She had hit a wall, and it had stopped her flat. She had gotten a brief image of a castle, but it was gone just as fast. Chandra had pushed at her a few times that day, but the result had always been the same. She let her thoughts slip away as she took the remote from some blue band girl and took her seat before the flat screen. She couldn't maintain something like that while she was asleep. Once she was snoring, Chandra would get back in, and tonight, it would not be gentle. Chandra was tired of playing with the little bitch. Tonight, she would break her. Tonight, she would flood her mind with the sickest things imaginable, and the little girl would melt like a summer popsicle. By tomorrow, Chandra thought, as she watched Veronica lay out her latest plan for tonight's story, Masha would be a shaking pile of goo, and Chandra would be back where she belonged, as the queen of this little freak show. As she sat in the armchair, crossing her legs and watching primly, she felt like a queen. No, not a queen, she thought. She felt like the woman from Derek's comics. Derek, dicky to his friends, was a little nerd like the rest of these kids, and he had a special place for comic books, despite how much her father hated them. She would have never said so. Comics were nerd shit, but... Her brother had been reading one at the breakfast table one morning when she had caught sight of a woman sitting amidst a group of well-dressed gentlemen. When she had asked who the woman was, Dickie had gushed endlessly about her. The woman was vicious, compassionless, and utterly set on her goals. If Dex liked to think of himself as Professor Xavier, then Chandra liked to imagine herself as Emma Frost, and tonight... She would crush this wannabe Jean Grey and put aside her only true rival. Dex was coming back from brushing his teeth when Dick called his name. The boy was standing alone for once, but Dex had little doubt that his lackeys were lingering nearby. What you want, Dick? Dex asked, making the name sound like an insult. Look, I know we got off on the wrong foot, but I want to start over. It's pretty clear that you have the medal for this, and 
I want you as a friend, not an enemy. Uh Uh-huh, Dex said, crossing his arms and looking at Dick skeptically. So, why not come sit with us tomorrow for breakfast? We can all work out together, and you can hang with some like-minded people. What do you say? Dex thought about it, weighing the other boy's sincerity and finding it lacking. Would Ryan be welcome to come sit with us? Dick laughed, like Dex had just said the funniest thing in the world. (laughs) That runt? Of course not. You gotta cut the fat a little, D. The kid's holding you back. You've got a lot of dead weight around you, in fact. Why not come hang out with us and get rid of some of that? But Dex walked past him. He'd heard enough, but as Dick put a hand on his shoulder, it appeared he hadn't said enough yet. Don't be stupid, Dex. You need friends in here. Friends on your level. No one survives this place alone, I hear. Last time I checked, three was less than ten, Dex growled, letting Dick know with his eyes that he needed to remove that hand. Dick must have gotten the message because he took it off and folded his arms too. I mean real friends, not dependents. Those kids are as good as leeches. You need people to watch your back. From who? Dex asked. Seems like it's just you and your cronies who are making trouble. You don't get it, do you? We're red bands, man. I've checked it out. Red bands don't graduate, Dex. Red bands join the brute squad almost 100% of the time. There have been four red bands to graduate in the whole history of the kindergarten, and we would be the 52nd class. Dex didn't bother to ask how he discovered this, but it seemed that Dick might not be as stupid as he looked. This little speech got a point, or are you just airing out your cheeks? My point is that we are going to be the snatchers and minders who come after them, Cutter's a snatcher. He makes no bones about that, and it's pretty obvious that they aren't just going to let us go once we're caught. None of your little friends are going to hit the road with you. Most of them won't even stick around to be minders. They'll leave you behind, Dex. You need some friends with some lasting power. Friends like me. Dex shook his head and walked off. I won't make the offer again, Dick said from behind him. Dex snorted. I'm not sure why you made it to start with, he said, moving off towards whatever fresh hell tonight brought. What do you want, dwarf? Cutter asked, leaning on his desk. Hammershole pursed his lips. He hated Cutter, almost as much as Cutter hated him, he suspected, but he needed some information. As much as he despised him, Cutter heard things, things he wasn't supposed to hear, and Hammershole had a sneaking suspicion that he was one of the few non-washouts to know what lay in paradise, the reward that awaited after graduation. If he did, he kept it to himself. People with big mouths seemed to get silenced around here. Information. I have reason to believe that a student might be in trouble. Gosh, you don't say... Cutter said, putting a hand to his cheek in false amazement. It's almost like they live in a nut house. Charles Xavier's home for dangerous kiddos. <laughs> Dr. Hammershoal did his best not to look amused. I just need your information, not your comedy. Cutter wiped his nails on his scrubs, looking like a carnival barker at Coney Island. You know, information around here doesn't come cheap, short stuff. What do you got to trade? Hammershoal tried to keep the disgust off his face. You're a sick, sick man. Do you know that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop doing your impression of my ex-wife. Show me what you got. Hammershoal hated it, but he had already expected something like this. He reached into his desk and took out a garment that Dunstan would have recognized very well if Hammershoal hadn't made him forget about it. It was red, white, and blue, a Ralph Lauren polo, the kind you could pick up at Goodwill for a couple of bucks. This one, however, was special. The last owner had been evaporated from the teeth up by a sniper, 
while he shot at a diplomat in Philadelphia about 10 years ago. There was no way that Cutter could have known that, but his eyes lit up when he saw the shirt like a kid on Christmas. Ah, I can smell it. Gimme, gimme, he said, holding his hands out for the shirt. Information first, then you get your prize. Cutter blew out like a horse. Spoil sport. Okay, what is it specifically you want to know? Hammershaw blinked at him. Is there more than one student planning violence on another? Cutter laughed. <laughs> a little man. There are 20 kids here. The world only had four people before one of them felt that was too many. So you can imagine how bad it is here. One of the blue bands, Gerald, asked me about a student who might be planning to attack another student. The boy does not seem particularly inclined to violence, so I'm wondering who he's talking to. Cutter's smile faded, and he looked thoughtful for a change. Hammershaw didn't like it. It was like watching an animal trying to figure out a lock. Just so happens that one of my boys asked me the same thing. Dexter was curious about what would happen if two students fought, and what the staff would do about it. What did you tell him? Hammershaw asked, and winced as the smile returned. That the laws of the jungle rule here, and as long as no one caught him, there wouldn't be any problems. Hammershaw nodded. He knew this Dexter, by reputation if not by sight, and that narrowed the field a little. Dexter had a group around him, a mixture of bands that made up nearly half the students, and if they were planning violence, that could be bad. I need more than that if you want this. I need something definitive that I can take to Security Chief Ripley. Cutter thought about it. Dick and his little group clearly don't like Dexter or his friend Ryan. There's some green band coos who hates the little girl in that class. Can't say I blame her much. That bitch is smarmy. Other than that, usual squabbles. There really isn't much. This class is sickeningly harmonious. Hammershaw nodded. Dex palled around with a lot of green bands and some of the blue bands, too. It had been hard to miss the fact that Gerald and Rebecca had been with him today. It still hurt him a little to see the hatred on Rebecca's face when she saw him, but he supposed it was to be expected. He had betrayed her, and he made it a point to never be alone with her. Okay, as I thought, he said, tossing the shirt to Cutter. Cutter buried his face in it, and Hammershaw tried not to cringe. <sighs> no matter how much they wash it, no matter how much they try to get it out, the scent of death always lingers, and it's sweet indeed. Good evening, everyone. It's me, Dr. Plague. I'm glad you made it to the end of the story. Thanks for stopping by. If you think you might like a little more spooky in your life, well, there should be some links popping up at the end of this to other great stories, maybe even some great playlists that you can discover. We update seven nights a week, so there's always something new and something spooky waiting for you on the channel. If you like your spooky a little more tactile, there should be some links to Amazon down in my description, so go have a look over there. It should get you to all my latest books. Speaking of books, I've got my first horror novel, Towsy Homestead, available for purchase on Amazon. It's my first horror novel, so I'd really appreciate it if you'd go give it a look and maybe give it a buy, too. If you'd like to support the channel, we have a subscription program here on YouTube, but we've also got a Patreon with lots of tiers and lots of different rewards. For example, our spooky skeleton contributors get their spooky 12 hours early. That's right, they get their videos at 8.30 a.m. as opposed to 8.30 p.m. Ghostly Reader tier contributors, that's a tier that's only available on Patreon, I'm afraid, get a book anytime I write one, signed and on their doorstep, hopefully in a timely manner. So, however you support the channel, whether it's monetarily or by enjoying our great videos here, thank you so much. Speaking of patrons, before we go, let's go ahead and thank them. Thanks to Sarah, Unicorn Hollow, Just Amy, 
and Cinnamon Fox for being our spooky ghost contributors. Thanks to Shannon McGee, Janet, Lee Kendall, Rhonda J, Sue Casper, Valinar, Cleo Harper Returns, Sarah, and Queen Sheba for being our spooky skeleton contributors. And thanks to Old Snap, Winter, Zeronin, Stephanie Carrington, Tyler Parker, Grim Reaper, Tomboy Top Uwu, Queen Sheba, Miss New Booty, and Alex Connor for being our ghostly reader tier contributors. Thanks, everyone. We just couldn't do the show without you. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Dr. Plague, signing off. Have a wonderful evening.